Hello everyone and welcome to Uncivil Law. For today's case, we have a qualified immunity decision from the United States Supreme Court that denied qualified immunity even though the Court of Appeals applied qualified immunity. This hasn't happened in quite a long time where the United States Supreme Court reversed a decision that the upheld qualified immunity and then the U.S. Supreme Court said, no, actually not so much no qualified immunity for you. So is the United States Supreme Court trying to send a broader signal about what they think about qualified immunity? Are they trying to give tea leaves about where things are going? Who knows? But we'll cover this case for what it's worth and try to project a little bit into the future. Let's get started with this. The petitioner, Trent Taylor, is an inmate in the custody of the Texas Department of Criminal Justice. Taylor alleges that for six full days in September of 2013, correctional officers confined him in a pair of shockingly unsanitary cells. The first cell was covered nearly floor to ceiling in masses amounts of human waste all over the floor, the ceiling, the windows, the walls, and even packed inside the water faucet. Fearing that his food and water would be contaminated because, you know, it would be, Taylor did not eat or drink for nearly four days. The correctional officers then moved Taylor to a second, frigidly cold cell, which was equipped only with a clogged drain in the floor to dispose of waste. So it didn't have a toilet or anything like that. All it had was a literal drain in the floor, which incidentally was clogged. That's nice. Taylor held his bladder for 24 hours, but he eventually relieved himself as you would, causing the drain to overflow and raw sewage to spill across the floor. Because the cell lacked a bunk and because Taylor was confined without any clothing in the cold and frigid cell, he was left to sleep naked in the sewage. So, yeah, the, the story of Taylor over here in the Texas Department of Corrections is, is not going super well. Uh, he, his first cell was covered floor to ceiling with the faucet itself stuffed full of human re of human uh, refuse. And then he was taken to a second cell, which was extremely cold and didn't have bedding on it. All it had was a floor and a drain, which was over full. And then when he eventually relieved himself, because you know, he had to, he had no choice but then to sleep on the floor of his cold cell in his own waste. That's, that's super promising. The Court of Appeals for the Fifth Circuit properly held that these conditions of confinement violate the Eighth Amendment prohibition on cruel and unusual punishment. A little bit. But then they say what, of course, you knew they were going to say before we ever started. Based on its assessment that the law was not clearly established, that prisoners could not be held in cells teeming with human waste for only six days, only, the court concluded that the prison officials responsible for Taylor's confinement did not have fair warning that their specific acts were unconstitutional. Yeah, so as everyone knows from our qualified immunity analysis, we need two things to, to take away an officer's or jailer's qualified immunity. We need a violation of your constitutional rights, and those constitutional rights have to be clearly established, or it has to be one of those rare cases that even though it's not clearly established, it's so blatantly obvious that, of course, this would violate your rights. And the Court of Appeals for the Fifth Circuit, which should not really surprise anyone who knows anything about qualified immunity law from this channel, the Court of Appeals of the Fifth Ch Circuit said, you know what, this is a violation of your constitutional rights, but it's not clearly established. And this isn't one of those rare cases. How could these jailers know that let keeping someone in human waste for six days was a constitutional violation? They had no idea. Qualified immunity confirmed. The U.S. Supreme Court actually has a bit of a problem with that, which is really surprising. But yeah, I say it's surprising not because of the outcome, by the way. I say it's surprising because the Supreme Court got involved. It's been a little bit since they've uh, overturned a court of appeals that upheld a qualified immunity decision. It's been a little while. The Supreme Court continues. The Fifth Circuit erred in granting the officers qualified immunity on this basis. Qualified immunity shields an officer from suit when she makes a decision that, even if constitutionally deficient, reasonably misapprehends the law governing the circumstances she confronted. But no reasonable con correction officer could have concluded that, under the extreme conditions of this case, it was constitutionally permissible to house Taylor in such deplorably unsanitary conditions for such an extended period of time. The Fifth Circuit identified no evidence the conditions in Taylor's confinement were compelled by necessity 
or exigency. So it's not like, you know, we had no choice. It's not like we needed to. It's not like we had some really, really important reason for doing it. They didn't identify some super important reason that they did this really horrible thing. Nor does the summary judgment record reveal any reason to suspect the conditions of the confinement could not have been mitigated either in degree or duration. Yeah, so the Supreme Court says, okay, uh, first of all, you didn't present any evidence that you had to do this. And second of all, there's no evidence that you couldn't have done something about it, even if you had nowhere else to put them. Like, maybe get a mop? I don't know. But maybe you could have done something to make the conditions a little less horrible? Yeah? And although an officer-by-officer -officer analysis will be necessary on remand, because we have to figure out each individual officer's responsibility and knowledge, also, of course, the truth of the underlying facts, because we haven't gotten that far, because we give them qualified immunity. So we're just assuming this is true so far, although there's pretty good evidence to assume it's true. The record suggests that at least some of the officers were, deliber were deliberately indifferent to the conditions of the cell. One officer, upon placing Taylor in the first cell, remarked to another that Taylor was going to have a long weekend. Another officer, upon placing Taylor in the second cell, told Taylor he hoped Taylor would effing freeze. These are encouraging words. Confronted with the particularly egregious facts of this case, any reasonable officer should have realized that Taylor's conditions of confinement offended the Constitution. We therefore grant Taylor's petition for writ of certiorari, vacate the judgment of the Court of Appeals for Fifth Circuit, and remand the case for further proceedings consistent with this opinion. And oh my God, there's a dissent. Wow. Okay, Justice Todd, this should be good. Oh, he didn't give an opinion. He just dissented with no opinion. Okay. J Justice Thomas does not agree for reasons that he is not going to specify. Fine. Thus, that brings us to the end of the case of Taylor versus Rojas from the Court of Appeal for the Fifth Circuit by way of Texas. In this case, Taylor was sent into jail in some very uncomfortable conditions for an extended period of time in which he was forced, to, he was not allowed, well, he was not able to eat or drink and was forced to sleep on a cold floor in his own waist because he had no choice. The Court of Appeals for the Fifth Circuit thought that this was not sufficiently clear that the officers didn't know better. How could they possibly have known? Because there was no case establishing this. And the United States Supreme Court actually reversed, which is amazing, not for its conclusion, but for the fact that they actually got involved because it's been a little bit. So is the United States Supreme Court trying to send a signal to the other courts about maybe they should apply this a little bit more frequently? I don't know. Are they trying to say anything about qualified immunity in a more broader sense? I don't know. But maybe courts will take this to light and apply qualified immunity a little bit less unless it gets reversed completely in another case, but at least for the moment, that's the end of the discussion of this case. Thank you so much for being part of the Uncivil Law family. If you enjoyed this legal education content, please hit the subscribe button. It really helps the channel grow. We appreciate your continuing support. Until later, my friends, cheers and goodbye.